What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to improve the download speeds of the PlayStation 4. If you're suffering from the slow download speed issue that a lot of PS4s suffer from, it seems to be an intermittent issue for some people and a permanent issue for others. Um, I'm not sure, I've, I've heard that P the PS4 Pros don't really have the issue, but a lot of the older PS4s have this problem and it's not just a Wi-Fi problem, it happens to people on a direct wired LAN cable connection too. So who knows exactly why it happens, but it's, it's very frustrating. As you can see, I'm downloading a Red Dead Redemption 2 update, which is 8 gigabytes, and it's going to take me 5 hours according to the PS4. And now I don't have the best internet connection. I only have about 30 megabits per second download speed. Some people will think that's great. Other people will think that's crap. But it should only take about, you know, with a 30 megabit per second connection, it should only take about half an hour or 45 minutes roughly to download an 8 gigabyte file, not five hours. So in this video, I'm going to show you a trick that you can do to actually download the update on your computer and serve it to your PS4. That way you can download the file um, using your full connection to download the file much faster uh, rather than go, doing it through the PS4 with these slow speeds. Now I've already done a video on how to improve the general internet connection on your PS4 um, for older PS4s that are stuck on the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Um, so check that video out if you haven't already. I recommend doing the steps in that video before moving to this kind of last resort method of, uh, of improving the download speed. Uh, but I'll put that video in the description and in the cards in the top right hand corner. Now you can do this with wired or wireless. Um, obviously it's going to be faster using wired, transferring the, the files back from the PC to the computer. So a wired connection is going to give you much, much faster speeds, especially if you set it up in the way that I'm going to show you here. But this will work um, with wireless as well. It will just be a bit slower. So a wired connection is the best for this. If you plug one end of a LAN cable or Ethernet cable into your computer and the other end into your PS4. And then on your computer, if you go down to the little Wi-Fi or network connection icon on your taskbar, right click, go to open network and internet settings and click change adapter options. So if you right click on your Wi-Fi adapter, go to properties, select sharing and check the box to allow other network users to connect through this computer's internet connection. And then expand this drop down box and select the ethernet adapter as the device you want to share the connection with because that is the PS4, the adapter that the PS4 is connected to. If you don't have a drop down menu then just tick the box and click OK and now your Wi-Fi connection on your computer has been shared with the PlayStation 4. So then on the PS4 itself you would want to go to the settings and go to network and set up your internet connection and make sure you use a LAN cable and then you can just use easy to get the system all connected. So now you're sharing your computer's connection with the PS4 via a LAN cable. So when we use the proxy to send the update files back to the PS4 once we have them downloaded on the computer, so the files will be being transferred directly along the ethernet cable from the computer to the PS4. So you'll get basically much faster speeds, which is what we want. So you can do this on Wi-Fi though. So if you don't have an ethernet cable, you can't connect your PS4 to your computer because they're too far away from each other or something. You can still do this on Wi-Fi, it just means it won't quite, it won't be quite as fast, uh, but it will still be faster than these pathetically slow download speeds that we're getting from uh, the PS4. So once we have everything set up here, we can now set up the proxy. So on the computer, we're going to run PSX Download Helper, which will be linked in the description. Now it is a Chinese or Japanese app so it's all in Chinese or Japanese but you can change the language by clicking the play button and then going yeah, just click OK to the error message go to the fifth um, tab and then this box here is the language settings so just select this and change it to English and then uh, reopen the tool and it will now be in English so the IP address should automatically be put in here for you. Um, the optimal IP address, which in my case is the IP address of my ethernet adapter. Um, but if you're using Wi-Fi, then it will be the IP address of your Wi-Fi adapter um, that will be in here. So all we have to do is note down the IP address that's in here and the port number, which is 8080. 
and then click the start button and click OK to the, the error message. Yeah, that error appears all the time, but it doesn't really matter. Now, before you add the proxy, make sure you've paused the downloads on the PS4 because when you add the proxy server, you might not be able to uh, connect to Sony's servers to uh, start downloading the file again. So make sure you've already started the download and, pa and you've paused it before you add the, the proxy settings in. So then on the PS4, we're gonna go into the settings and go to the network settings, set up internet connection, use either Wi-Fi or LAN cable, whichever one you're using, do custom, then select automatic IP address, do not specify host name, automatic DNS and automatic MTU settings. The proxy server is the one we need to change. So we're gonna say use a proxy and then for the IP address, we're gonna put in uh, the IP address that was in the uh, PSX download helper, which is the IP address of my ethernet adapter, which for me was 137.1. So put in the IP address from the PSX download helper port number, make sure that's selected on 8080, then click next and you're done. Now you don't actually need to test the internet connection, you can just view connection status and make sure that um, it's all good. So once you see the NAT type popping up, you know that it's good. So now we can basically just resume the download. So if I go to notifications, Go to downloads okay so now what happens is if i go to resume and if i just bring this over to the computer here you'll see what happens when i click resume we get a bunch of stuff popping up here now if nothing shows up then you have to make sure that uh, your firewall's not blocking it so if you have an antivirus firewall or a windows defender make sure that uh, the psx download helper is allowed on the firewall and it's not being blocked or just disable the firewall temporarily. And then I'm just gonna pause it again. So I've paused it again, and this is all the links. So these are the actual links that the PS4 is reaching out to to download the, the update from. If you hover over the, the link, the PSN link, you can see we've got uh, Red Dead Redemption 002. That one is not the actual update file. That's, see how the file ends dash DP dot package? That is not the one we're looking for. So we're gonna go down to this one. This is the one we're looking for. The one that ends underscore zero dot package file. So the one that's underscore zero dot PKG, that is the update file. So I'm gonna click copy. And now I can just download this on my computer. So I could even just paste the link into Google and download it from, um, you know, just download it through Chrome. So after the .pkg, you can delete everything after the .pkg. That's just unnecessary uh, data. So this is the actual link that ends .pkg. And if I press enter, you'll see that it starts downloading the package file. Don't know why I did that twice, I guess. But you're better off using a download manager. Uh, there's three that I would recommend. Internet Download Manager is great. Uh, Eagle Get is great. And J Downloader 2 is great as well. So any one of those download managers will you know, be better than downloading through Chrome or any other web browser. So I've got J Downloader. So I'm gonna open J Downloader 2. I'm gonna go to the link grabber on J Downloader 2 and add the link in here. So it already pastes it in there for me. Now game updates and any files that you download, any any of these package files you download, they typically come in parts unless they're four gigabytes or less, in which case they'll only be one, but they typically come in four gigabyte parts. Now this Red Dead Redemption 2 update is actually 10 gigs. I know it said 8.4 before, but I don't know why. It, it is 10 gigabytes though. Um, so, so if every part is four gigabytes, then obviously there's going to be more than one part for this Red Dead Redemption 2 update. So if I copy the link and uh, paste it underneath and change this underscore zero at the end to underscore one, that is the, the next part. So that's one four gigabyte part and the second link is the, the next four gigabyte part. So that's eight gigabytes but the, the, the update is 10 gigabytes, so there'll be a, there'll be a third part as well, uh, which will be less than four gigabytes. So that will be underscore two. So it goes underscore zero, underscore one, underscore two. You know, just for good measure, you could even try underscore three 
Um, if there isn't an underscore three, then it will just say that the link doesn't exist. So I'm just going to continue. It's going to add all those links into the link grabber. And as you can see, underscore three doesn't exist. So it's, it's telling me that uh, it's not available. So that means there's only three parts, a four gigabyte part, another four gigabyte part, and a two gigabyte part, which guess what, it's 10 gigabytes. So now you can just click the download button and start downloading them. So now you can see total bytes is 10, 10 gigabytes. Um, it says 10 gigabytes in total, and it says it's gonna take about an hour. That's, you can ignore these ETAs, they're not accurate. Um, this one down here is the one you wanna look at. So it says three links, and it's gonna take about 57 minutes to download the entire thing. And you can see it's downloading at 2.9 megabytes per second, which is pretty much the limit of my download speed. So now we're gonna get this whole thing downloaded in less than an hour, instead of five or six hours or however long it was gonna take downloading it directly on the PS4. But once it's downloaded on the computer, we still have to transfer it back to the PS4 uh, using the proxy, the PSX download helper, but it'll still be a lot faster, especially on wired connection uh, to transfer it back to the PS4. It'll probably only take a couple of minutes to transfer the update back from the computer to the PS4 once it's downloaded on the computer. Okay, so while that's downloading, if I go into the settings and find out where those files are being downloaded to on my computer. So they're being downloaded to the G drive in a folder called J Downloader. So I'm gonna copy that because in PSX Download Helper, we're gonna to go to the settings and then we're gonna select auto find and replace file and then select folder and then select the folder, which for me is the J Downloader folder on my G drive. So I'm gonna select that folder because that is the folder that, that J Downloader is currently downloading these files to. So then if I select this option to auto find and replace file, it means that once the files are downloaded, PSX download helper will look for the files in that drive and it will find them and then it will serve them back to the PS4 when you click resume on the PS4. That way you don't have to select them manually, uh, which is pretty useful. So as you can see, I've done this with a lot of other games too. But as you can see, I've got the files downloaded here. Red Dead Redemption 0, 1, and 2. All package files are downloaded and ready to go. So now what I'm going to do is, and it's in the, the J Downloader folder, so PSX Download Helper should know uh, that these files are in here now, and it should serve them back to the PS4. So all I have to do is if I go back to the PS4 here, and I resume the download, Watch what happens. As you can see, PSX Download Helper has found the files in the J Downloader uh, folder, and it's now serving them back to the PS4. And look at that, look at the speed. Look at the speed of that, five minutes. It's gonna do the 10 gigabyte um, update in five minutes. Now, granted, it still took a whole hour to download the files to uh, the computer, but now it's serving the files from the computer back to the PS4, and the PS4 is, you know, acting as if it's just downloading them from PSN or Sony servers, but it's actually downloading them from the computer. Uh, so it's going to transfer a lot faster here. So overall, so if you count these, if you count this four minutes plus the one hour it took to download, then one hour and four minutes, or one hour five minutes on a 30 megabit per second connection to get this update downloaded. If I had just continued downloading it via the PS4 normally, it would have taken five or six hours. So a huge difference right there. So yeah, that is basically how you can improve the download speed of your PS4. I mean, you're not really improving the download speed of your PS4. What you're really doing is you're offloading the, the update to your computer. So you're downloading it on your computer and then serving it back to your PS4 over your local area connection. Uh, admittedly, it's not a, a perfect system, um, but it does work. And another thing, because we selected the auto find and replace files, it's now doing the um, the second package file. It's done the first four gigabytes. So now you can see it's it's now serving underscore one dot package file to the PS4, which is the, the second package file, the second four gigabyte package file. So it automatically found it 
in the download directory and it's it's serving it to the PS4. It said four minutes, but it's not been four minutes and now it's saying it's only gonna take about 60 seconds. So really it's <laughs> this process, transferring it back from the computer, once you've downloaded it on the computer, transferring it back to the PS4 is much, much faster than even the, the ETA says it is because now it's, now it's gonna be less than a minute to have this whole thing downloaded. So yeah, there you go. That is how you, uh, kind of have a workaround to to get files downloaded on your PS4 much faster when you have this uh, horrible download speed issue. And uh, as I said, with Wi-Fi though, it's gonna take longer. The, the only reason it's downloading so fast from the computer to the PS4 is because it's going directly down an ethernet cable. Um, but if you were using Wi-Fi on the PS4 and Wi-Fi on your computer, then it's of course gonna take longer, but it'll still be a lot faster than the, the slow ass download speed uh, that you have with the PS4. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.